Okay, in this video, I want to update our interacting. So what I mean by that is when we pick up an item and we click on it on the client, I want this negative 30 here to be controlled by the server. So currently when we pick up and use an item, well, let me rephrase that, when we use an item in our inventory, it's only being used on the client. The server has no idea that it's been used. So instead I want to alter it so the server is what modifies our health and hunger and all that, while also using the item out of our array here that is replicated. So that way we know that the item has actually been used, you know, properly. So we're going to modify the variable on the client and server. We're going to do it on the client so that way it's instant, lag doesn't matter. And then we're going to do it on the server as well. So that way if the client tries to cheat it for whatever reason, the server will correct it. So that way you cannot cheat it. And then we want to have the server move the item from the inventory items array here. We're going to do that in the client as well, but just visually. And then whenever we you know, go to close and reopen our inventory, it's going to be kind of reloaded. So we may end up trying to, uh, where's our structs here? Set it up so we know which index that item is at, so that way it holds it. And then we could, you know, update our inventory a little bit so it has like a grid kind of system going. Because currently, I don't know, for whatever reason, this is not showing up properly on the client. I don't know why. Which actually brings up the question of, what happens if I play as client? Does it look right? Okay, so it just has something to do with, I guess, the viewport or playing with multiple clients, I guess. That's probably why. So we just might have to leave it for the client and not look at it too hard. We'll just look at it on the server because we can see the results on the client. Anyhow, so to begin, let's go ahead and replicate our health. So we're going to do a U, sorry, not a U property. We're going to do a replicated using as well. So replicated using on rep underscore stats. So let's copy and paste that down into our hunger. And then we're going to have a U property, or sorry, a U function void on rep underscore stats and create that implementation move it down below our get lifetime replicated props and we also want to replicate our health and our hunger let's go ahead and replicate these and i want these to be replicated to other clients as well so we're just going to go ahead and set them up like this copy and paste that one more time and change inventory items to health and hunger so that way it's set to replicate then in our on rep stats what we're going to do is call our up update stats function like that so that way it well obviously updates and we want to set this up so we modify our inventory items as well so we need to kind of think about this so when we use an item we call use item so here we're going to do a check to see if we're on the server or the client. So we want to make sure we create a server RPC as well. Like so. And we're going to do void server underscore use item. And it's going to take in the same parameters like that. Now again, I mentioned when you create the implementation in Visual Studio, you have to manually create your validate and implementation functions. So make sure you do that. And if it still gives you an error, put them in your header file as well. So for the bool, we just return true. And I'm going to move it above my implementation because that's what I like doing. <clears throat> and then in our use item function, we want to do a check. So if as authority, or better yet, let's just do if we have authority, we'll do the... Uh, item subclass check first so if item subclass there we go and let's see so if item subclass then we have if has authority oops else we call server underscore use item and pass in item subclass 
I did you breakpoint. Okay, so if our item subclass is valid, we go through and we do a check. So if we have authority, meaning we're the server, we go ahead and use the item. Otherwise, we go from the server, or sorry, from the client to the server, which will then recall use item and pass in the item subclass again, just so that way it'll go through the check, run this one more time, and because we'll be on the server now, it will then call use item. So now, what we want to do is let's go to our use function inside the item, and not exactly what I meant. Let's go to our we'll do our med pack. So that goes through, and it you know if character we add health, this realistically should only be called on the server, which we are doing. But we can also, for safety reasons, add a has authority check before our character. So we're only going to run add health if we have authority. So that way, just for kind of safekeeping. And we're going to do the same thing for food. So we can close these now. Let's go to our add health. We're going to remove update stats and do an if adds authority. Then we increment the health. Or better yet, now that I'm thinking about it, I want to run this. I forgot I mentioned before, sorry, that I wanted to run this on the client first and then the server. So that way the client can see the effect immediately. So what we can do is we can actually control that functionality directly inside of the item itself. So let's open up our food and our med pack and remove the has authority check on both. And I'll show you what I mean here in a second. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and call that item use and pass in this on the client. So that way the client's gonna run the use function as well. However, it will not always run this function. What I mean by that is, let's say we have a function here that we wanted to have give us a, or kind of do something unique, but we only want to have it run on the server. We don't want the client to run it at all. Well, if that's the case, in our class where we had that set up, all we would do is just add a has authority check inside this if statement, and that'll prevent it from running so that way it'll only run on the server. So this way we can control it so we can have it run on the client as well as easily select which classes we only want to run on the server. So that should take care of pretty much everything. So this will go through call use and let's say, you know, adds to our health. Well, it's going to run this on our health. In which case, we can go ahead and call the on rep stats because it's in, or better yet, just update stats. and pass in hunger and health or screw it let's just call yeah probably better practice not to call the on rep directly but that will go through and pretty much handle you know all of that so use item if we have authority we call item use and again we want to do the same check so if has authority or sorry not has authority if uh what do you call it no, sorry, we want to go to the use function. No, we already are on it. Never mind. So if is locally controlled, we want to call the on rep. So that's because the on rep does not fire by default on the server. So I'm going to go ahead and recompile and give this a quick test just to, you know, make sure everything's good to go. And if it works, I will go ahead and step through everything. So that way it will hopefully make a little bit more sense. Because I know I kind of, I feel like I rushed through that a bit. Okay, so on the client, pick it up. Click it. We have negative 30. Okay, great. Check the server, pick it up. Use it. And there we go. Okay, so that should be working pretty much as intended. So what is, okay, so we have an issue. Trying to read widget, w underscore UI, for update stats. Okay, so I feel like we're having an issue when we call update stats. Well, obviously it actually said so. So we're gonna have to probably go through and fix that. Let's just look at it real quick. 
So we're only going to call update stats, hopefully on the client. But it is locally. So when we call use. Okay, so it's when we call use. So what we want to do is we can actually wrap this is locally controlled inside the on wrap. So let's copy this and move this into the on wrap function for on wrap stats. So if remove the uh, actual on wrap call though. So if is locally controlled, we update the stats. So that way we are only going to call this blueprint event if we own that player. So we should get rid of that error now. Look at, yep, still works. And still works, we close it. Okay, we have an issue here still, so that's probably, we only have one, so my guess is it is related to the server. So we'll have to, I'll have to check that out here in a second. But what I want to do mostly right now is just kind of trickle through what exactly we are doing. So when we click on an item in our inventory widget, we go through and we call use item. From here, we just want to, again, make sure the class we're passing in is valid. But we want to do a check. So if we are the server, meaning we're the listen server, we go ahead and, you know, we create the CDO or the uh, yeah, CDO class default object like this, and we call use on it. If we are not the server, we, again, we want to use the item just so we can see the effect visually immediately. And then we also call the server RPC, which simply calls use item again. So that way, when we run it on the server again, or sorry, when we run it the second time, it's going to run this block of code. So it's just going to run item use on the server, or yeah, on the server. So that way, if the client tries to cheat it somehow by modifying this or the value of the item, it will get corrected by the server. So then we will make our way down to food, for example. We'll do the check. If character is valid, we call remove food. Well, when we get to remove food, or sorry, remove hunger, we go through, we call, we subtract the value, and we call update stats. Now, this should be run on the client immediately, and then it gets called on the server. And I just found the issue. So, when we do it on the server, or sorry, when the client does it, it's calling update stats, but it is calling it on the, uh, the server. So it's triggering that event on the server, which is not what we want. We only want it to run on the client that owns it. So where we call update stats, we want to wrap it in a is locally controlled as well. I kind of had a feeling stepping through would help me solve the issue. So for remove hunger and add health, let's uh, wrap it in an is locally controlled braces. So then it's going to call that. Then it's going to go through. Let me go ahead and do live coding. It's going to trigger the blueprint event, which will then update our widgets here on the left side. So now when we pick it up and use it, it still works all the same. But when I close it, we no longer get that blueprint warning because w underscore UI is not valid because w underscore UI, our widget, was trying to be accessed from the server on the client's character which in that case, it simply does not exist because we set this up. So if is locally controlled, then we create the widget. So it's only going to exist on the local client. So that's, yeah, that's the reason for that. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for Patreons as well as you get early access to nearly all of my videos, such as this one. If you have any questions or anything like that, Feel free to join my Discord that's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.